Hello friends, this video on coordinate geometry part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Right. So before we study deep into coordinate geometry, let's understand why should we study coordinate geometry. I, I told you, okay, this coordinate geometry helps you to trace the point or locate the point or locate, locate any geometric object. But big deal, right? I mean, it is just a method. So why should we study coordinate geometry? So there are various applications of coordinate geometry first is locate a point in the paper which i told for example if i locate a point and then i ask someone else to locate the same point and i'm not passing the image but i want to pass some information then i can use this there's a convention so if you can see that this point is uh, located from uh, let's suppose uh, this is eight centimeter and this is seven centimeter from uh, these edges can actually locate the point once again using the coordinate geometry. The whole map system, the map system is all based on coordinate geometry, the latitude, longitude, the whole map system is based on coordinate geometry because map is all about locating points, right? You, you locate your city, you locate your streets in the map. In the construction field, coordinate geometry is used a lot because they want to find out the relative position of this point with respect to this, the distance with these, right? They want to trace these points. So if you want to go to the construction field, civil engineering lines in future, then coordinate geometry is a must for you. If you want to move into finance, fin coordinate geometry will be used, all the graphs which you plot. We see all these graphs are points. And as I told, coordinate geometry helps you to plot these points, okay? So graphs and finance, all these will be uh, using the concept of coordinate geometry. Astrophysics, they want to uh, find out distance between two planets without even uh, going to the planets. So their coordinate geometry is used extensively. Navigation, the whole air, airplane navigation. They, they, uh, there's a controller room somewhere in the ground which tracks the position of airplanes. That is all done using coordinate geometry. In chemistry, the whole molecules, if, you, if there's a coordinate uh, coordinate chemistry chapter, if you go to class 12, there's a chapter on the coordinate chemistry, we talked about uh, the various bonds between di different molecules and uh, how, in fact, you will see that the way these molecules behave is all because of uh, different orientation. Right? And in that case, the coordinate chemistry plays a very, very critical role. There we, they talk about uh, the position of different uh, molecules with respect to uh, one atom, right? Or position of different atom with respect to one atom in a molecule. And it, I mean, it will be a little advanced for you for now, but just understand that if you want to be in the chemistry field, then these coordinate geometry concepts will help you a lot in future. Airplane navigation is not the only thing. GPS navigation, which we use nowadays in uh, cars, right? That also use coordinate geometry. Okay. If you want to create animations, video games, uh, you, coordinate geometry is used a lot. So we also use uh, video games. I, I believe most of you must be playing video games and most of you must be watching animations. In all these things, coordinate geometry is used a lot. In the field of medical science, for x-rays, they use coordinate geometry to plot a point. For example, there is a fracture somewhere here. They'll use the coordinate geometry system to actually, you know, then uh, put some medicines here, right? In the CT scan, MRI, all these are medical terms. All these are uh, medical scanning uh, terms, actually. They are used to diagnose a particular disease. So in all these fields, coordinate geometry is used a lot. A very simple chapter, but huge application of coordinate geometry in our real life. A very, very important chapter for us to understand. So, since we are talking about coordinate geometry, I believe talking about history will be a good idea. Right? If you understand the history of coordinate geometry, uh, it is better. So, long time back, uh, if you see in uh, BCs, 1000 BCs and uh, in fact, 1500 uh, AD still in till that period itself, the geometry itself was not much developed. And uh, the most occupied place was place near river Nile and in fact earlier the civilizations were 
located near river because the river provides uh, water for cultivation and the whole civilization used to establish near river but nowadays due to advancement in technologies and communications and transport systems we will see people staying even in uh, forest people staying in uh, mountains right that is different but earlier since the technology was not very advanced people generally used to stay near rivers if you talk about harappa civilization and uh, all the typical civilization you you must have studied in history and all these were near river so nile near uh, river nile also in egypt there was a, a big civilization but if you see most of these rivers have the flood problem so uh, sometime in a year the whole area will get flooded and then they'll have a dry dry it dry season but people used to fight for land because they had this piece of land and then there was a flood and everything got washed off and when the things improved they wanted their piece of land back but there was no way to measure there was no way to measure that piece of land and thus the concept of geometry came where geo geo is land and meter is measure so they developed a way to measure piece of land that's why they created the concepts of uh, lengths length and they created the concept of square and rectangles right so that's what the geometry is but geometry subject itself was not quantitative right so it was all axiomatic it was based on assumptions so what happened was this geometry helped to describe the dimension of a given object for example this land the geometry helped to describe dimension and that was a good relief for uh, people who were fighting for land but they could this geometry could not help to describe the position okay but it could not describe position position of a point or a geometric element so there was a need there was a need for a system which can actually describe the position of a geometric element and if you see it was all axiomatic approach all based on theories and logical reasoning right or logical approach so there was no algebra to it you cannot add subtract those kind of things were not there so this guy actually rene descartes okay is rene descartes so he developed a system where he developed the coordinate geometry system and this coordinate geometry system actually uh, made the whole geometry quantitative he made this whole geometry system quantitative now okay and since it was quantitative you can use algebraic methods that means you can add to square you can uh, multiply to square something like that okay and and the whole geometry system evolved so it was much better than the axiomatic or logical approach which was there earlier so a good example of this is for example we have seen that a plus b square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab this is something you can explain using geometry as well how so let's say that there is a line a this line is line a okay and there is another line line b let's suppose and i am putting this here now this line b so this line b i am putting it here let's suppose this is a bigger line this is line b okay so both these are merged this total line so let's put me this point here a or let's not use a because ab is already there let's use this point c d and e so line cd is of length a and line de is of length b and thus line ce is of length ab let's adding this now if i have to prove a plus b square i have to make a square so what i'll do is i'll create the area of the square so i'll create a square of the length ab this is not square completely but assume this is square so this is a plus b this is a plus b 
and this is equal to b. So a plus b square is nothing but area of this figure, right? C e. Let's suppose put, let me put C e f g. C e f g. So to prove that a plus b square is equal to a square plus b square plus two ab, what I can do is so I can just draw a line here, right? This is a, and assuming this is also a and this is b, this is also a and this is b, right? And I'll draw a line here. So if you see this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a square, right? Let me put a square here. This is what? This is b, this is b, this is b, this is b, all side b, this is b square. This is b, this is a, this is a b. This is b, this is a, this is a b. So if you see the area of the whole square is what? a square plus this one b square plus a b plus a b that is 2 a b. So if you see the same uh, expressions which we started in the last chapter, you can explain using geometry as well. This was possible because you could actually give points to these uh, geometry uh, or what do you call these points and we can say that this is a, this is a, this becomes a plus b, right? Because you see here the coordinate geometry is involved. So if you're not understanding the concept of coordinate geometry with this example, you can just hold for some time. Let's try to plot the points and uh, try to tell which point is what. But this is just to explain you that these coordinate geometry this coordinate uh, geometry actually gave algebraic tone to the earlier geometry. Earlier geometry was earlier geometry I'm talking about in 1400-1500 AD, developed typically by Greeks. Those were all logical geometry. But this guy, Dana Descartes, he created this whole chapter or whole uh, concept of coordinate geometry and this coordinate geometry actually gave the algebraic touch to the geometry. You see, using geometry, I am solving algebra. And that is what I mean when I am saying that he gave the algebraic touch to the geometry. Earlier this was not there. Earlier this was not possible. Okay. So, let's, let's see that. Okay. So, let's see the history of the Cartesian system uh, typically from the Rene Descartes system what it is. So this guy, René Descartes, he was a French mathematician. René He is a French mathematician. Okay, and pretty old, 17th century. And this guy used to like he liked a lot to lie in the bed and think. So most of the time he used to lie in the bed and he used to think. He graph like this. He used to think. Right? He used to think of something. So one fine day, again he was lying in the bed and he was thinking. He was resting in the bed, he was thinking. He was thinking of this B. He was thinking, how can I determine the position of the B in the room. So if you see here, this is a room here and this B is moving, right? This B is moving and you want to determine the position of the B. So he told, let me draw something. Let me create a system with which I can determine the position of the B. And with this, he designed the Cartesian system. Okay. And if you see the Cartesian system is named after him. D. Cartes. This Cartes is his name in his honor. And typically, if you see this is a room, and I assume this is also a room. Okay. This is the same room which I am showing. In this fashion here. Okay, this is the same room. If there's a point here, so what he did was he created this. He it is his invention actually. So he created this whole system and he's saying that any point in this whole system can be denoted by its perpendicular length from xyz coordinates or xyz plane. So we will talk about that in detail. Just hold for some time. Just that this is the point. So he's saying that this point can be 
determined by these coordinates. What is x, what is y, what is z? They are nothing but the distance. For example, x is nothing but this is x axis. Okay, this distance is x. If this is the y axis, this distance is y, the red one. If this is z axis, this is z. So hold for some time if you have doubt in this. Just understand that while you are sleeping, you want to find a position where you can determine the position of you want to find a system where by which you can determine the position of this P. And while sleeping only, he found this new system. In fact, if you see most of the thing or a good number of things in the science world is derived by sleeping. A lot of scientists they sleep. In fact, if you study in the higher class, there's something called benzene. And the formula of benzene is also derived by sleeping. Okay, he got something in the dreams. So Anyway, that's a different part altogether. So we'll talk about Cartesian system now. So while sleeping only, uh, Rene Descartes designed the... Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.